Buck, I wanted to ask you about more uh, faction of organized crime that was involved in your crew. Uh, more specifically, a lot of uh, names came up like uh, Jimmy Shogra or Jamel Shogra from uh, El Paso. As far as I know, there wasn't any more uh, organized type crime like, you know, mob or anybody like that. Now, Jimmy Shogra, uh, there were some people in my crew that uh, uh, had some, had some, uh, was acquaintance with his wife, Liz, Elizabeth Shogra. Now, you, uh, you mentioned Liz Shogra, Elizabeth Shogra, which was Jimmy's wife. She was involved in, uh, some, some more crime during that, that time, which was some of it was, had to do with a, the murder of a, a federal judge, John Wood. Is that yeah, correct? Riley, I think it was pretty much common knowledge that she had hired Harrelson to do the hit on that federal judge out there, uh, uh John Wood in uh, San Antonio, because he was going to preside over uh, uh, Shogra's trial, and that was the whole reason for it. But I think they had, there's a lot of FBI shows out there that even show that, that there was money paid and, and all that. But, you know, I always, I always had my doubt about, about Harrelson doing that hit. He was, he was a hit man in Texas, but I, I don't know. I, I have my doubts about it. Jimmy's brother, Lee, uh, was an attorney. Was shot and killed in his office in 1978. Jimmy was never linked to the to the John Wood uh, murder of the federal judge John Wood. Now Liz had some connections there that she used. Uh, that's what that was the word on the street down the grapevine that uh, she was involved in uh, some of that. But now they never implicated Jimmy in any of that. As far as I know, he never served a day over that, and then they found him not guilty. But now he did do some time. I think when he was in prison, he did time over something that wasn't even related to that. That didn't even pertain to that. If my notes serve me right, wasn't he also a uh, huge gambler from Las Vegas? He was a high roller, and he also had some ties to. Uh, Back in his early days, didn't have some ties to organized crime. Yeah, Jimmy had ties to the old mobster back in the day, uh, old man Joe Bonanno, back in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, Jimmy was, was smuggling in marijuana on airplanes before uh, before the Cowboys even thought about bringing it in on boats. And he's no hand at it. And uh, that's why that they tried to implicate him with us in the late 70s and early 80s when all these trials started. Tried to get him uh, in the middle of all that, but uh, it was, as far as I know, he didn't have anything to do with our deal. Now, the only connection, like I was saying earlier, that we had with him was someone in my crew knew his wife, and that's that's the closest I knew didn't even come to it. And yeah, he was a uh, he was a high roller at, in Vegas. He'd be rolling out there, and they would they would lay out the red carpet for him, and you know they they would he'd have a whole floor. Out that Harris and uh, Caesars and all that, they rolled it out for him because he had the money, and uh, they always said that he laundered some money out there, and he probably did. So I don't know. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I don't know really anything about that at all. Okay, that would be a great segue into my next question. In your book, you mentioned that money laundering went on, and that you had been involved in some of the the activities within that. Uh, can you just briefly tell me some of the things that was uh, involved in all Yeah, that? Riley, you know, when when drugs are involved in anything and you got that much uh, capital going through and you got uh, that many drugs that's being sold, obviously you're going to have a hell of a lot of money coming through. And uh, that can be a problem for drug dealers. That, that's the main problem for drug dealers other than getting rid of their, their product. You have to get rid of the money that's coming in on top of it. And uh, sometimes that, you know, the Mexicans down there, they can, the federales will cover for them. Hell, they'll take it and hide it for them. Or you, know, you just pay them off. You know, it didn't work yet, especially back in the 70s and 80s. Back down in, in the United States, it didn't work that way. You had to get rid of the money somehow, some way. And in the day, they had these holding clearing houses that you take it to. Take his old dirty money in there and you just put it. And that's one of the other cash we was talking. I said, you know, they had money piled with ceiling in one of these houses. Now, I've seen that happen, and I've seen it. You know, that's, that's kind of a scary situation. 
because you don't want to be around that much money. Right. You know, he might come right. in and just rob you or kill everybody in there or, or, or take every bit of it. But that's uh, that's what happens in drug dealing. It just don't pay, you know, and I'm just thankful. You know, God got me out of that situation, and uh, and I thank him for it. Yeah, I could, it could have been, I could have wound up dead, you know, uh, a lot of people in family, relatives, friends, and, and did have friends that wound up paying for that. I did, and uh, I'm just very thankful. Not in that, in that more got redeemed. Um, but that, that's that's the problems you run into with that that kind of situation.